Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will learn about the two-phase locking protocol, which is also called as the 2PL protocol. So this 2PL protocol is basically a concurrency control protocol. It is basically a concurrency control protocol, which is used to prevent concurrent transactions from interfering with one another using the concept of locks. So before learning about the two-phase locking protocol, let's learn about some basic concepts which is associated with this protocol. The first one is about a schedule. So the meaning of a schedule is, schedule is nothing but a chronological execution sequence of a transaction is called as a schedule. A schedule is nothing but a chronological execution sequence. A schedule is nothing but a chronological execution sequence of a transaction. And a schedule means it can have many transactions and a transaction can have multiple instructions or tasks associated with it. So this schedule is of two types namely serial schedule and non-serial schedule. So in the case of a serial schedule, serial schedule is a type of schedule in which one transaction is executed completely before starting another transaction. Okay, if a schedule is not serial, then it is called as a non-serial schedule. That means before one transaction completes its execution, another transaction will start its execution. Such a type of schedule is called as a non-serial schedule. We also have a concept called as serializable schedule. So in the case of a serializable schedule, a schedule is said to be a serializable schedule if it is equivalent to some serial schedule of the same n transactions. Okay, If you are able to prove that your particular schedule S yes, is equivalent to some serial schedule of the same n transactions, then that schedule is called a serializable schedule. So we have to check whether our particular schedule is serializable or not. Why? Because a serializable schedule only will leave the database in a consistent state. If a schedule is not serializable, then there are chances that, the, that it may leave the database in an inconsistent state. So serializability is a concept which helps us to check whether schedules are serializable or not. Now coming to our concept of concurrency control, as I told earlier, two-phase locking protocol is a concurrency control protocol. So concurrency control is a very important for proper functioning of a database management system. Why? Because in a regular database, many database transactions may be executed simultaneously and they may require access to the same data. So whenever multiple transactions are running concurrently, there is a possibility that the database may be left in an inconsistent state. So concurrency control protocols guarantee the serializability in such a situation. Okay, so the need for concurrency control is because multiple transactions multiple transactions are executed concurrently in a regular database system. Okay, multiple transactions execute concurrently and they may all require access to the same data. So if, when such a situation happens, the database may be left in an inconsistent state and this concurrency control protocol guarantees serializability in such a situation. So what is the meaning of serializability? Serializability is a concept which helps us to check which schedules are serializable. Serializability concept helps us to check which schedules are serializable. Okay, A serializable schedule is one which will always leave the database in a consistent state. Okay, That is all about the basic concept. So schedule is nothing but a chronological execution sequence of a set of n transactions and it is divided into two types serial and non-serial. Serial schedule means a schedule in which one transaction is executed completely before, before another transaction starts. 
non serial schedule means before one transaction completes its execution another transaction will in a serializable schedule it will always leave the database in a consistent state and a schedule is serializable if it is equivalent to some serial schedule of the same n transactions that is you have a particular schedule and if you are able to prove that it is equivalent to another serial schedule of the same n transactions then it is called as a serializable schedule and serializability concept helps us to check which schedules are serializable and which schedules are not serializable okay so now coming back to our uh, two phase locking protocol two phase locking protocol is a concurrency control protocol so you have a number of concurrency control protocols to guarantee serializability out of that two phase locking protocol is based on 2pl the two phase locking protocol is based on locking data items two phase locking protocol is based on locking of the data items locking of the data items to prevent concurrent transactions from interfering with one another it also enforces an additional condition that guarantees serializability it also enforces an additional condition to guarantee serializability okay it also enforces an additional condition to guarantee serializability so two phase locking protocol is a concurrency control protocol which is based on locking the data items and by locking the data items you are able to prevent concurrent transactions from interfering with one another so this one is used in the majority of commercial database management systems for example berkeley db is one such dbms which makes use of this two phase locking protocol okay so that is about the introduction and as i told you two phase locking protocol is based on the concept of locks and it locks the data items so that concurrent transactions don't interfere so now we have to know the concept of locks so basically there are three types of locks so before learning about those three types of locks what is the meaning of a lock a lock is nothing but a variable associated with a data item which describes the status of the item with respect to the operations that can be applied on the data item so lock is nothing but a variable associated with a data item which describes the status of the data item okay lock is a variable which is used to describe the status of the data item status means what which operations can be applied on the data item so that status of that item with respect to what operation i can do at what operation i can do on the data item at any point of time that status is represented by a variable called as lock so this lock is useful for synchronizing the access between concurrent transactions which are executing in a database and this lock is basically of three different types so what is what are those three different types namely binary locks all read write locks also called as shared exclusive locks so read write locks are also called as shared exclusive locks what is a binary lock so as far as a binary lock is concerned a binary lock can have only two values either 1 or 0 or i can say it can have two states locked and unlocked state so if the value of the binary lock is 1 then the item cannot be accessed by the database operation okay if the value of the binary lock is 1 then the item x cannot be accessed by the database operation that requests the data item if the value of the binary lock is 0 then the item can be accessed when requested and the lock value is changed to 1 so that is a binary lock the other type of lock is your read write lock also called as shared exclusive lock so shared exclusive lock is also called as shared lock is also called read lock and exclusive lock is your write lock so 
Uh, in the previous binary locking scheme, it is very much uh, restrictive because at most one transaction only can hold a lock on a data item. But actually, it is not required. If it is a read operation, multi we can allow multiple transactions to access the data item at the same point of time. This is because read operations are non-conflicting operations. So, in this scheme of shared exclusive locks or read write locks, you have three locking operations, namely read lock of X, write lock and unlock. So, you have three types of operations here, namely read lock, read lock on a data item X, write lock on a data item X and unlock of the data item X. Okay. So, in 2PL, you have three types of locks, namely read lock, write lock and unlock. So, if you get the read lock on a data item X, it is also called as share locked because other transactions will be allowed to read the data item. If you get the write lock on a data item X, it is called as exclusively locked. That means only that single transaction exclusively holds the lock on the data item X. Let's say transaction T1 gets the write lock on the uh, data item X, then only transaction T1 will be able to do read and write operations on the data item X till it finishes its operation. Unlock is used to unlock the data item X. So this shows your lock compatibility table. In this lock compatibility table, let's say a particular transaction already has a read lock on a data item X. Some other transaction T2 wants to obtain the read lock on the same data item, then it will be able to do so. So here X denotes incompatibility. Okay, wherever X is being marked, it denotes incompatibility. So suppose transaction T1 has obtained the read lock on a data item X and some other transaction T2 wants to obtain the write lock on the same data item, that is not possible, it is incompatible. Similarly, transaction T1 already has obtained the write lock on a data item X and another transaction T2 wants to get the read lock it will not be able to do so. It is incompatible. And similarly, if one transaction T1 already has a write lock on a data item and another transaction T2 wants to get the write lock on the same data item, it will not be able to do so. So from this, you can understand that only read locks or shared locks. If one transaction has already acquired the read lock on a data item, other transactions also will be able to acquire the read lock on the same data item, but not other type of locks. So, in the 2PL protocol, uh, so this 2PL protocol has to follow some rules. As I told you, 2PL is a concurrency control protocol which is based on the co uh, concept of locking the data items to ensure uh, serializability. So, here how it ensures serializability is it has a rule. All the locking operations comes before the first unlock operation in the transaction. That means uh, if you are, if you have to work with data items X and Y and you have to get uh, locks on the data items X and Y, all such locking operations has to be done first before the first unlock operation. That is first rule. The second one is this in 2PL protocol, this uh, transaction happens in two different phases. First phase is called expanding phase, which is also called as the growing phase. And the second phase is called as the shrinking phase. So in this expanding phase new locks on items can be acquired but so you can get new locks new locks can be acquired and new new locks can be acquired but existing locks cannot be released the second phase is called as shrinking phase in this shrinking phase existing locks can be released Existing locks can be released, but no new locks can be acquired. No new locks can be acquired. Okay. So with this uh, growing phase and the shrinking phase, the concept of serializability is maintained in the 2PL protocol. So I will show you that with the help of an example. So, here, so let's say you have two transactions T1 and T2. So in this case, let's say transaction T1 has to perform the operation X is equal to X plus Y. So it has, it has to update the value of X and it also has to read the value of Y. So it has to get the read lock for Y and it has to get the write lock for X. 
So first it gets the read lock for y and then reads the data item y. Okay, and then it gets the write lock on x. So since it has read the data item y, it can unlock y. Okay, so once it has acquired the locks, this read lock, read item, write lock. So this is called as the growing phase where it has obtained all the locks which it requires. And then when it starts unlocking, it is said to be in the shrinking phase. Okay, so then it performs the operation x is equal to x plus y. And then it performs the writing of the item y. Writing of the item x. And then it unlocks x also. Okay, so once it finishes its operation with the data item x, it unlocks x. So once it has acquired all the locks, then it starts its unlock operation. So when it starts its unlock operation, it is said to enter the shrinking phase. So once it starts its shrinking phase, it cannot acquire any new locks. Okay, so this one is called as the growing phase. And this one is considered as the start of the shrinking phase. So similarly for transaction T2, let's say it has to perform the operation y is equal to x plus y. It is performing an update operation on y and it has to read the data item x. So it means it has to obtain the read lock for the data item x and it has to obtain the write lock for the data item y. It has to obtain all these locks before starting to unlock them. So it can get the read lock and the write locks. Read lock of x and then it reads x and then it gets the write lock for y since it has uh, finished its operation with x it can unlock x it performs operation y is equal to x plus y and then it can write the data item and then after writing the data item it can unlock y Okay, this is an example of the 2PL protocol because all the locking of data items is done in the growing phase and then once the shrinking phase starts, all the unlocking of data items is being done and no new locks are obtained during the unlocking phase. So this is a perfect example of a set of transactions T1 and T2 which follows the 2PL protocol. Now the uh, advantage of this scheme is in the case of uh, 2PL protocol, it ensures serializability without even checking the schedule. So if a set of transactions follows this growing phase and shrinking phase, it ensures serializability. That is the advantage. The disadvantage is it limits the amount of concurrency that can ac actually occur in a schedule because uh, let's say the transaction T1 uh, has acquired the lock on the data item X and it has finished its operation with X, but still it cannot release the data item X without uh, before acquiring all the locks for all the other data items which it requires. So till such time, it cannot release the data item X. So during that process, some other transaction may be waiting for the data item X, may be waiting for acquiring the lock on the data item X. So the amount of concurrency which can be acquired in this two-phase locking protocol is very limited. The second one is, Although it says that it guarantees serializability, uh, it does not permit all possible serial schedules. Okay, that is some serializable schedules may be prohibited by the 2PL protocol. And uh, the other important drawback is it actually suffers from deadlocks, starvation and cascading rollbacks. Okay, so that is the disadvantage of the 2PL protocol. And another important thing is I told you this 2PL protocol ensures serializability. How does this 2PL protocol uh, ensures serializability is shown with an example here. So here you have two transactions T1 and T2. Okay. <clears throat> so to ensure serializability, I have to find a serializability ordering. How to find a serializability ordering is uh, you take any transaction here we already as I already told you 2PL protocol contains the growing and the shrinking phase and this growing and the shrinking phase ensures serializability. How? 
so we have a um, term called as lock point so what is the meaning of this lock point is lock point is nothing but the point in the schedule where the transaction has obtained its final lock is called as the lock point of the transaction or the end of the growing phase for a transaction is called as the lock point for a transaction say for example uh, you take transaction t2 so here uh the final lock for transaction t2 is obtained here so this is the lock point for transaction t2 take transaction t1 the end of the growing phase is this statement lock x of a so this is the lock point for transaction t1 so also um shared locks are represented by s of a and exclusive locks are represented by x of b in this example this is another way in which shared locks and exclusive locks can be represented so here Uh, how do i know the serializability ordering is just arrange the transactions according to their lock points and that ordering will give you the serializability ordering for the transactions so here uh, t2 has got its first lock point the lock point for a uh, transaction t2 occurs first and the lock point for transaction t1 occurs next so the serializability ordering for this set of transactions or for this schedule is t2 followed by t1 why because you are arranging the transactions according to their lock points and when it is arranged that ordering will give you the serializability ordering so t2 has its uh, lock point occurring first according to that ordering so t2 followed by t1 is the serializability ordering for this transaction so this is how you find the serializability ordering by using the two phase locking protocol and by that two phase locking protocol ensures serializability so that's all about two phase locking protocol which is a very important topic so in the next video we will see about some important uh, gate questions and some other competitive exam questions which has been asked in this topic see in my next video take care bye bye